is what Christmas is all about. Believing Jesus is the Son of God and believing that He's born of a virgin. And believing that He came to earth to rescue us from our doubts and to rescue us from sin. Zacharias is kind of a practical guy. I'm old, she's old, won't work. But when you think about it, why would a person's age really matter? Because God's the creator. Doesn't matter how young or how old, God has the power to intervene and change our lives. And God chose an older woman to demonstrate to the nation of Israel and to you and I today how powerful He is. Nothing stands in His way. Amen. And the truth is, God's strength is fully revealed when our strength is fully depleted. Hallelujah. Oh, the Lord. His power is made perfect in our weakness. He is a refuge for the oppressed. He is a stronghold in times of trouble. He is God. And he's got this figured out. And Zechariah was filled with fear. Filled with doubts. And when he came out of the temple, because the angel said, okay, you want a sign? You won't be able to speak until your baby's born. And so he comes out of the temple, the people are expecting, expecting a blessing from him, and he's waving his hands, and they suddenly realize he can't talk, and that they suddenly realize he must have had a vision. And Zechariah goes back home. Now, it would have been an amazing conversation, except Zechariah can't talk. In the course of time, his wife becomes pregnant. And Elizabeth will spend five months in seclusion. She may just wanted to be sure she really was pregnant before she told her friends. In the sixth month of her pregnancy, Gabriel, the angel who spoke to Zacharias, now <coughs> appears to Mary and tells her that she's going to give birth not only to a child, but to the Messiah. Mary had a question. Mary's question wasn't questions of doubt. She was, okay, I'm a virgin. What do I need to do to be faithful to God in this, this promise you've made to me? Amen. See, Zacharias wanted proof because he had doubts. Mary wanted clarification because she wanted to be faithful. She realized she was a virgin, but she realized that wasn't a problem for God. Because with God, all things are possible. Amen. Her question stemmed from faith. His question stemmed from a lack of faith. And we both, we've all been there, haven't we? But we've had that lack of faith. And we've had those moments when we've had amazing faith because of God's intervention. And the angel says to Mary, go see your cousin Elizabeth, because she's pregnant. Remember, they didn't have cell phones back then. Right. They didn't have the internet. So news didn't travel so fast. I imagine in Judea, everybody knew about Elizabeth's pregnancy. In verse 38 of chapter 1, you see Mary's testimony. Behold, the bond slave of the Lord, be it done to me according to your word. Amen. Mm. No, no one could ask for a better response. Amen. Lord, whatever it is you want me to do, I'm okay with it. Amen. One of the most significant statements that Luke makes in his gospel story here is that in the sight of the Lord, Elizabeth and Zechariah were righteous in the sight of the Lord, 
John would be great in the sight of the Lord. You see, the world measures man by his successes and what he's accomplished. God measures man and woman by their willingness. In the end, it doesn't really matter what people think of us. It matters what God thinks of us. Amen. Because a day will come, the great resurrection morning, when the dead in Christ are raised, and we which are alive may be caught in the air. The day of judgment will come. And we tend to think of judgment from the negative because of our judicial system. Innocent until proven guilty. But in God's system, it is guilty until deemed righteous. Mm. We're not innocent. We're all guilty. Yeah. But, when we're, but when we're clothed with the righteousness of Jesus Christ, Jesus is innocent. And our innocence comes from Jesus Christ. That's the, that's the heart of the Elijah message, is that we're guilty before God. But when we allow Christ to clothe us with his righteousness, Jesus is innocent. And we're the benefactors of his innocence. So here we are, not far from Christmas, celebrating the birth of the Christ child. But our job is not done. Our job is to continue the Elijah message, telling people about the soon coming of Christ and about the hope that we have in Christ, the hope of eternal life because of his righteousness, because of what he accomplished in his life and ultimately what he accomplished in his death. He stands as our high priest. And he has promised. John 14, let not your hearts be troubled. He has promised us that he's going to return. And all the problems we see in the world, we brought to an end. And after the millennium, this whole world will be transformed. And we'll spend eternity with Jesus Christ. And so it's important that we not lose sight of this Elijah message that God has called us to preach. Amen. We must share with our families, with our friends, with our neighbors, with our loved ones. That God's love for us is unconditional. And that we can't, by our own efforts, fix ourselves. That's right. Only God can fix us. Amen. The only question is, are we willing to surrender to him? So I'm going to ask you to make a commitment for the new year to be Elijah's, to share the Elijah message. If you're willing to do that, if you're willing to start the new year as a messenger of Elijah, stand with me and let's ask the Lord to bless us. I can't tell you how to say that message to people, but God will. He is faithful in giving us the words to speak. Father in heaven, thank you, Lord, for the Christmas story recorded for us in the Gospels. Thank you for Luke's message. Lord, thank you for this amazing miracle you worked in Elizabeth's life. Thank you for showing us what an awesome God you are. And also thank you for allowing us to participate as Elijah messengers telling the world that Jesus is the only solution. He is our only hope and that he loves us unconditionally. So Lord, be with us as we finish this year off and we begin a new year to share with everybody you bring us in contact with by our life, by our acts of compassion, and by our words. What an amazing God we serve. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.
remain standing while we'll singing 